One of the outputs of the three-year program implemented by FAO and the government of Madagascar in response to the locust plague which prevailed in Madagascar from 2012 to 2016 is the construction of a warehouse at Tulear for the storage of pesticides and the management of empty drums. This warehouse, which has a storage capacity of 112,000 liters of pesticides, has been built in such a way as to preserve human health and protect the environment. International experts provided training to staff in order to raise awareness on good management practices for a pesticide warehouse. I have spent 40 years now working in the pesticide area. Uh, during that time, I've traveled extensively and I've seen the, the potential risks and hazards uh, that mismanagement or mis uh, inappropriate warehousing can cause to the health of people and also their environment. Following a few very, very basic steps uh, will greatly reduce those risks and ensure that pesticides can be warehoused and managed in a very, very safe and effective manner without risks to the individuals who work there, their environment, or the people around the warehouse itself. A pesticide warehouse is a sensitive and potentially hazardous area. Entrance is strictly controlled. First of all, it is imperative to communicate to the guard the names of all persons who will access the site. All entries and exits must be registered. Thus, in the event of an issue, the emergency services can consult the attendance register and immediately know how many people are inside the site. Once in, the team members have to meet the pesticide warehouse manager for the daily briefing. They receive instructions on what to do during the day. This will determine the type of personal protective equipment that must be worn as each activity has a specific level of risk. The warehouse manager holds the keys for the different working areas and gives them to the team leader. A second key should always be made available, normally held by the guardian um, close to the entrance to the site. The reason for having a key always and permanently on site is that in the case of, a, of an emergency, access can be gained directly to all locations on site by the emergency services. In general, a pesticide warehouse consists of a clean zone. In other words, the offices, annex buildings, and the guard room, and a potentially contaminated working area that consists of the elementary storage units and the room for the drum crusher. To reach the working area, all team members must pass through a transit zone. It is in this transit zone that the workers will put on their personal protective equipment to protect themselves from any contamination in the working area. To come back from the working to the clean area, they will unavoidably have to go back through the transit zone to remove their now contaminated equipment. There are no good or acceptable reasons to move between the contaminated zone and the clean zone without going through the transit area. Before putting on personal protective equipment, workers leave their clothes and personal belongings in the cloakroom, not to risk contaminating them in working areas. Once undressed, the workers choose the appropriate personal protective equipment in view of the tasks to be completed. In most cases, added to the protective overalls itself are a mask, glasses, 
gloves, and boots. Care should be taken to ensure that the protective overalls cover boots and gloves appropriately. Avoiding that, in case of direct contact with pesticides, these contact and penetrate the skin. Personal protective equipment will not protect you against poor management practices and it is always a, a correct to get the management practices right before you then consider the, the, the protective equipment. It should not be considered as an armour which will protect you from all risks. Once fully equipped, the team workers can go to the contaminated areas. When working in the storage area, you work as a team. The concept of looking after each other is critical to that team effort. If you see one of your colleagues doing something which is not as intended, you must notify them so that their actions can be rectified. Loading and unloading of empty or full drums is potentially hazardous, especially with full drums. During handling, drums can be damaged, resulting in leakage of potentially toxic substances. Therefore, these handling operations must be carried out on the raised platform, so that if an accident occurs, the pesticides do not reach the ground. For 200-litre drums, it is generally recommended to use an electric forklift. The drums are put on wooden pallets that serve as a support for both transport and storage. A pallet can hold a maximum of four 200-litre drums. It is strictly forbidden to load or unload the pallets by rolling the drums. The drums must be handled in a vertical position and transferred to the pallets without ever touching the ground. Once the drums are on the pallet or in the truck, in the case of loading, they must be tied together to reduce the risk of fall. Storage is the main activity of a pesticide warehouse. To ensure a better management of products and empty drums, FAO has established a pesticide stock management system. Thanks to the unique barcodes put on each drum, this system allows monitoring of each pesticide drum movements, their use in the field, and their restitution after use, and until empty drum disposal. The barcode must be scanned at both entry and exit to allow information processing and tracking along the entire chain of use. Stock management is led by a fundamental principle of using the oldest product first. Pesticides must therefore be placed according to their manufacturing or expiration date in order to prevent creation of obsolete pesticide stocks. To increase the storage capacity, it is possible to place one additional pallet layer above the first, but not more. When storing, a minimum distance of 60 centimeters between the pallet and the wall has to be left to facilitate drum inspection. You should never clamber over or climb onto uh, drums of pesticides. Uh, there are risks associated. Uh, you can fall through the tops of uh, corroding metal drums, uh, leading to significant contamination and lacerations of the body. Finally, if a drum arrives without a barcode, the worker must carefully mention on a sheet all the important information indicated by the producer on the packaging. Then it will be necessary to stick on the drum a barcode, which will be indicated on the sheet.
An inspection must be carried out every week to check the number of drums, their condition and the absence of leaks. In the event of a leak, it is essential to intervene immediately. If there is a risk of direct contact with a toxic substance, it is recommended to put on a plastic apron over the personal protective equipment. Each storeroom where pesticides are stored or handled must be equipped with a spill kit, consisting of a can filled with sand and a shovel. First, if possible, the leak has to be stopped by laying down the drum. Then the pallet has to be moved to intervene on the contaminated ground. Then pour sand to absorb the pesticide and collect it. Contaminated sand is put into a high-strength plastic bag. Then, the floor is carefully washed with water and detergent. The operation with sand is then repeated. The collected sand is also put into the plastic bag. The contaminated material must then be placed in another plastic bag, which will be stored in a container exclusively devoted to this purpose. Once the contaminated waste has reached a certain volume, it is managed by a specialized company that will treat it correctly. If liquid remains in the damaged drum, an electric pump is used to transfer it to an empty drum that, of course, contains the same product. Finally, a new clean pallet is placed and the drums that were on the contaminated pallet are transferred onto it. The contaminated pallet will be reduced into pieces and placed with other toxic waste. It is important that the contaminated waste is clearly labelled as such, right in big bold letters on the plastic bag, what is actually inside the plastic bag. Empty drums that are not intended for reuse to transport pesticides must be decontaminated and disposed. Barcodes must be scanned before drum disposal in order to keep a complete record of their use. Drum disposal is done for two main reasons. To reduce the storage volume and to prevent the local population from reusing contaminated containers for domestic purposes. First of all, drums must be thoroughly drained by pesticide type to ensure that all the contents have been emptied. In this case, it is recommended to wear a plastic apron over the personal protective equipment. The pesticides collected during the drainage will be stored again in drums, being careful not to mix the different types of pesticides and sprayed in the field. An external cleaning of the drums is then done with a rag soaked with soap. The rag will then be considered as contaminated material and stored with other wastes of the same type. The metal drums are destroyed with a drum crusher. The drum is inserted into the hydraulic press, which first rinses it inside with a chemical solvent and thus decontaminates it. Then the machine drills and compacts the drum to reduce its thickness. The crushed drums will be dried out on shelves and then stored in a dedicated unit, waiting to be sent to a foundry for recycling.
However, the drum crusher cannot compact plastic drums. Therefore, their decontamination is done manually. They are rinsed three times with solvent, then drilled or cut to make them unusable by the local population. Decontaminated drums may be recycled for non-domestic purposes. All the equipment used during the different activities of the working day must be washed with water and soap to remove any pesticide residue. When the workers enter the transit zones to change and go back to clean areas, the first procedure is to wash the gloves, which are usually the most contaminated parts. Then, they must be removed, being careful not to touch the outside with bare hands. The condition of masks and protective clothes is checked. If they are seriously contaminated, to warn or have a rip, they are thrown into a container for contaminated personal protective equipment. On the other hand, lightly contaminated clothes are washed with water and detergent and then put out to dry in the sun before reuse. And the workday ends, of course, with a good shower from head to toe. Following the basic steps which have been highlighted in this video, you'll see that uh, it is fairly straightforward and easy to safely and securely warehouse and move pesticides. However, vigilance should not stop at the pesticide warehouse. Before a truck loaded with pesticides leaves the warehouse, it is essential to take some ultimate precautions. The driver must check the general conditions of the truck, the presence of a spill kit, and ensure that the drums are securely tied. Then he will have to drive the truck carefully. Let's not forget that transporting pesticides is a great responsibility. Travel often must be undertaken on bad roads and through inhabited areas with products that are potentially hazardous to human health and the environment.